SpaceX astounds the world with their record-breaking achievements. From collaborating on NASA's mission to the moon to their relentless pursuit of landing humans on Mars, SpaceX is setting the bar higher than ever before. Join us as we delve into the extraordinary journey of SpaceX, the trailblazing space exploration company that continues to capture the public's attention with their groundbreaking accomplishments. Stay tuned to find out more about SpaceX's latest ventures and how they are revolutionizing space travel as we know it. Hello everyone welcome back to AB Space Channel. My name is Armin your today's host. Today, it is SpaceX that consistently captures the public's attention with record-breaking achievements. In a similar vein to NASA's mission to the moon, SpaceX is working tirelessly to achieve the monumental goal of landing humans on Mars for the first time. To achieve this goal, Musk introduced the Starship, the world's largest and most powerful rocket. However, conceptualizing such an advanced piece of technology is just the beginning. Deploying the rocket requires extensive testing involving numerous prototypes. This is even more complex when the rocket in question is the Starship. SpaceX has already conducted two orbital test flights and is now gearing up for the third one. Recently, the company took one of the last steps towards this launch. Every groundbreaking achievement in human history has often been accompanied by challenges and setbacks, and SpaceX's Starship program is no exception. The development of Starship has seen its share of explosive incidents during its test flights. However, the test flight ended in an explosion four minutes after launch due to a failure in stage separation, leading to the rocket disintegrating into a ball of fire and crashing into the Gulf of Mexico. The explosion caused massive damage to the launch pad at Starbase, which has since been reinforced with high-strength concrete and a water jet system to protect against the heat and force generated by launches. The second test flight saw improvements, including the introduction of hot staging, a technique where the upper stage engines ignite while still attached to the booster. Despite these improvements, the second test flight also ended explosively. The booster separated from the ship before disintegrating, and the upper stage exploded as well. Now, a few months after the second test flight, SpaceX is already preparing for the third test flight. Their recent progress includes successfully stacking Ship 28 on Booster 10. This step is typically done shortly before a launch as part of the final preparations. For SpaceX's second Starship launch, the timeline from the final stacking to the launch was quite short. The stacking of Ship 25 on Booster 9 was completed on November 15, following the conclusion of the environmental review by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service on November 14. The Federal Aviation Administration granted the flight license on November 15, and the launch occurred on November 18, 2023. The stacking follows a detailed test firing of both the Booster's 33 Raptor engines and a single Raptor engine on Ship 28 to verify their performance and readiness for space operations. After the second flight test, SpaceX started getting ready for their third test flight by moving Ship 28 to the testing pad aiming for a flight early in 2024. This step involves important tests like cryoproofs and static fires to check the rocket's readiness. Cryoproofs are tests where the rocket's tanks are filled with liquid nitrogen at very low temperatures to simulate the conditions they'll face when filled with actual rocket propellants like liquid oxygen and methane. This is done to make sure the rocket can handle the extreme cold and pressure without any problems, without actually having to ignite the engines. Static fires are when the rocket's engines are ignited for a short period while the rocket is held down so it doesn't take off. This lets engineers check that the engines and the rocket systems are all working well together and that the rocket can safely perform as needed when it actually launches. These tests are crucial for making sure everything is working as it should before the actual launch, allowing SpaceX to fix any issues that might come up. SpaceX has conducted a wet dress rehearsal with Ship 25 and Booster 9. This rehearsal involves loading the rocket with fuel to test its readiness without actually launching. During the wet dress rehearsal, SpaceX simulates the entire launch process, including a countdown but stops before igniting the engines. This allows the team to check all systems, including the fueling process, engine cooling, and the functionality of navigation controls like grid fins and thrusters, ensuring everything works as expected under launch conditions. New booster transport stands have also been introduced to facilitate easier handling and preparation of boosters for stacking. SpaceX is working towards launching Starship, aiming for a time frame around mid to late April after considering a March launch. This plan, 
depends on getting a launch license from the FAA. The FAA has concluded its investigation into the second flight of SpaceX's Starship, which encountered explosive failures of both stages during its test on November 18. However, they have clarified that the conclusion of this investigation does not automatically grant SpaceX permission for the next launch. The agency has outlined that SpaceX must address all identified corrective actions. The FAA is currently reviewing SpaceX's request for this license modification and is awaiting further information from SpaceX to make a final decision on the approval for the next Starship launch. However, the time for action has arrived once again. The FAA recently announced the closure of the mishap investigation related to Starship IFT-2, signaling the imminent arrival of IFT-3. Meanwhile, in Florida, a competitor of Starship, New Glenn, has conducted cryogenic testing. And indeed, B-10 has been rolled back to the launch pad indicating a step towards resuming testing. S-28 follows suit shortly. Both prototypes will be res to proceed with the remaining wet dress rehearsal test. Considering these developments, it seems that the reset period may mark the final major modifications for the S-28 and B-10 prototypes. Therefore, this moment serves as an opportune time to discuss the notable changes across all Starship components. In the recent notification regarding the conclusion of the mishap investigation, the FAA outlined 17 corrective actions for SpaceX to undertake. Ten of these actions are focused on the Starship, while the remaining seven pertain to Super Heavy. For Starship, the FAA specified changes such as hardware redesign to enhance durability and reduce complexity and leakage risk. Operational adjustments, updates to flammability analyses, and the installation of additional fire protection, guided systems, and modeling updates were also included. Regarding Super Heavy, hardware redesigns aimed to improve filtration and reduce slosh, control system modeling has been upgraded, and SpaceX has reevaluated the engine system. Based on flight data from IFT2 along with enhancing engine control algorithms. Now let's delve deeper into the noteworthy details starting from the top down. Finally focusing on Starship S-28, a notable change is observed in the nose cone. The vents have transitioned from a circular shape to a bell shape with a downward orientation. This alteration likely relates to attitude control or tank settling thrusters. The new positioning is expected to facilitate processes associated with the liquid oxygen header tank, particularly considering that the upcoming flight of Starship will involve transferring fuel from the header to the main tank. On the flip side, there have been notable changes to the heat shield layout. A flat edge line has been introduced, resulting in a neater configuration that may contribute to more even protection of the prototype. Additionally, at the flap arrow covers, there has been a reduction in the number of small heat shield tiles. This adjustment serves to streamline the manufacturing process by minimizing the need for cutting and producing smaller tiles. Moreover, it helps to decrease the amount of exposed gaps, thereby enhancing the vehicle's protection. SpaceX has also included heat shield tiles on the underside of the four flap arrow covers, providing more comprehensive protection to various components. Beneath the vents, there has been an increase in the number of Starlink terminals and they are now installed more prominently compared to their integration into the payload bay in S-25. This alteration aims to improve the ship's connectivity during flight, mitigating signal loss issues experienced in previous. Moving on to the payload section of S-28, there have been noticeable changes. The door of the payload bay appears to have additional details compared to S-25. Removable locking plates have been added around the door to prevent unintended openings, thereby ensuring the safety of internal payloads. The details of S-28's main tank have undergone significant changes. The vents in the methane tank have returned to their previous position, located near the middle instead of near the edges of the heat shield as seen in the prototypes before S-25. Below these vents, the pressure valves for the liquid oxygen tanks now consist of only one valve on the left side of the ship as opposed to two on both sides. Conversely, two small diverted thrusters in the liquid oxygen tank have been moved closer to the heat shield. Additionally, the two bell-shaped structures used to switch the propellant vents in S-25 have been completely removed from S-28. From the tank hatches, the black ring has disappeared and been replaced by a more fixed and firm structure. While the reason for this change is unclear, it may help mitigate the effects of fuel on other systems and optimize the fuel loading and venting process. 
the overall propellant tanks of the ship have been reinforced with approximately 24 internal stringer columns installed to enhance durability, especially for protecting the tanks inside. All welds across the prototype have also been altered to further increase the reliability of the ship. Furthermore, S28 features a change in assembly method. The stacking order will now follow a top-down approach instead of being assembled into two halves. This adjustment will ensure that cranes are always attached to the ship when stacked, reducing preparation time for lifting and other associated steps. Let's take a deeper look into the notable upgrades on the Super Heavy Booster, which has undergone several significant changes. Firstly, let's focus on the dome with a new design for the common bulkhead. The domes appear to be more regular, featuring a unified structure instead of the pyramid shape seen in B9. This upgrade, possibly made of stretch-formed panels, might lead to changes in the amount of fuel inside, although likely not significantly. Additionally, stabilization points have been altered compared to the previous structure in B9, with the addition of robust steel to enhance, you guessed it, stability. Externally, B10's grid fin system has undergone a minor change, reverting to the old design by removing the thin steel strip at the edges, which was present only in B9. This adjustment likely simplifies the design without significant impact. Similar to S28, B10 will also see a redesign of the Starlink terminal transitioning from a circular to a square structure with black material covering the top. While the specific effects of this change remain unclear, it may contribute to better monitoring of the booster and prevent signal loss during flight. Lastly, let's discuss another crucial system, the Raptor engine. The most significant change in the S28 engine will be the adoption of the new electric. TVC or thrust vector control system instead of the hydraulic unit system in previous prototypes. While this change was implemented since S26, S28 will be the first booster to fly with this new system. Based on previous analyses, this upgrade is expected to enhance engine reliability, ensuring smooth operation at all times, particularly in preventing engine issues post-separation, similar to those encountered in IFT2. Additionally, this change helps reduce mass and simplifies the design, contributing to overall efficiency and performance improvements. With the replacement of the hydraulic system, the power unit associated with it has been removed, along with the manifolds connected to the central engine. Consequently, protective shields are no longer necessary, resulting in further reductions in excess weight and complexity. Furthermore, in early February, the engines in S28 were swapped out. All the reasons for this change remain unclear and whether it's related to the aforementioned upgrades is uncertain. Currently, the prototype has not undergone a static fire test and it's possible that it will be conducted later as the long road closure has been cancelled. These are the notable changes in the hardware of Starship Flight 3. There are likely many other minor changes that will also impact the success of the flight. If you're aware of any additional notable upgrades, feel free to share them in the comments section. Down below. These upgrades are indeed remarkable. The dedication and hard work of SpaceX engineers are evident in the continuous improvements made to both S-28 and B-10, even just a few months after the IFT-2 flight. While some changes are immediately apparent, others may require further explanation from SpaceX. However, every modification, no matter how small, plays a crucial role in advancing towards the goals of IFT-3. The journey to orbit is nearing its culmination and it's an exciting time to anticipate and count down to that momentous achievement. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time